corners were invisible. I went from room to room. No living person was in sight. It was a day of mournfulness. Sounds of distress met me, and I passed along. I saw a light in all of the rooms. Every object was familiar to me. But were, where were all the people who were grieving? As if their hearts would break. I was puzzled and alarmed. What could be the meaning of all this? Determined to find the cause of the state of things so mysterious and so shocking. I kept on until I arrived at the East Room, which I entered. There I met with a sickening surprise. Before me was a caterpillar on which rested a corpse wrapped in funeral vestments. Around it were stationed soldiers who were acting as guards, and there was a throng of people gazing mournfully upon the corpse, whose face was covered, others weeping pitifully. Who is dead in the White House? I demanded of one of the soldiers. The president was his answer. He was killed by an assassin. Then came a loud burst of grief from the crowd, which woke me from my dream. I slept no more that night, and although it was a dream, I have been strangely annoyed by it ever since. Ten days later, the president of Abraham Lincoln was assassinated at Fort Stevens by Wolf Group, John Wolf Group. So we just had that great read by Joe Vexter, where he went over. Now, that that's really a dream that Abraham Lincoln had, and all the people back then who were writers, men, of, men and women of letters, they all wrote prolifically. They all kept journals and whatnot. <clears throat> now, he wrote about that in one of his journals, and we know that. It is documented. Now, I mean, we would have to wonder how fearful he was of assassination. Um, we would have to know uh, how pressing on his consciousness that was. Obviously, significantly so, if he had a dream foreshadowing it. And such a dream. In, in my opinion, in my opinion, excuse me. Yes. He was so connected to the afterlife that it revealed his own death afterwards. That's possible. I've heard he was an exceptionally uh, spiritual man. <clears throat> I have his son. I have a, a copy of his journals floating around the Okina studio somewhere. But I haven't dipped too into them. It's back burner stuff. But uh, 
it's amazing, you know. I wonder how many others uh, had dreams as such where they could see something like that coming. See, in my honest opinion, he had... It, it's like someone just knows. Like, they know when their time is coming. I've heard that, yes. I've heard that. It's like, he knew it. Yeah. It's like, he had it revealed to him. Like, you know, it's like, scary as it was, scary as it is, he had his fate revealed to him. And I'll tell you, pardon my language, it scared the living bejesus hell out of it seems as though he says that it made an impression that it annoyed him. So it was a persistent source of irritation and stress, I would wager, on the shoulders of what was already a heavy-laden um, presidency. And, war? And, such yeah. a war, and such a war, you know, it was popular uh, for some, and, and uh, you know, for others it was like, uh, wow. And and the potential the potential of disaster uh, that hovered over the entire thing and the, the carnal loss. Well, the Civil War was about the South and the North. You know that. Yes, it's about it's about so much more than that. So much more. Yes, first of all, it was for the purposes of abolitionism. But you must understand that the global interests that were involved, um, you know, slaves can't come on ships, uh, and ships are global. They're a global market. That's but, the thing you always have to remember. But I got I got to ask you one question. Yeah. With, and this could be like moving on to the territories of Spiritus Holographica. Yeah. which can be revisited later. Uh, maybe we need to take notes for that out of this. But who actually won the war when the president of one side won with that? Well, I mean, I'm assuming it's more rhetorical um, and that it's supposed to diagnose the situation as a point of value and loss and whatnot. I mean, what it did was it finally threw down hard slavery of bondage and uh, and such and lash, which is barbaric and inhuman. Yeah, yeah. But it's a Babylonian uh, thing, and there are many, many kinds of slavery uh, that exist. So, um, it still exists today. There are many places in the world where uh, people are under tyranny. And uh, tyranny is basically... You must have tyranny in order for slavery to exist. Yeah. So that is why one is liberated or emancipated or what have you, is to escape the tyrannical state. Yeah. With the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, all we know is reality had changed in America at that time. Things would not be the same. And from what we know and what was read by Joe Baxter, reported from RogerJNorton.com, that dreams can foretell a future. He must have tapped into something spiritual or something spiritual got to him and said, this is what's going to happen. And sometimes when we get dreams, we don't know how to react. And even if it's our own death, as 
an Abraham Lincoln. It would scare the living hell out of us. With that note, I think it was. This is Twilight Cricket coming to you on the show Journal to the Dreamscapes on the Joseph Capaldi Network. I'm from the Olkanuts Network. I've got a couple of podcast channels to tell you about. Oakwood's Afternity, audiobooks by Richard Andrew Olkus and David Michael Lockwood Jr. The Fruits of Oakwood Publishing. By sometime in late November, we should have some stuff regarding that. On Quantum Posey, our poetry channel, recently uploaded was the spoken word album, Machinations of the Cybernetic Phantom God. Check that out on the poetic writings of Richard Andrew Olkes. And we have Temporality's Shadow, which is a paranormal investigation podcast, where as the co-host, I read into the spirit radio a variety of scriptures, sacred texts, paranormal texts, and then we record the sweeps on the AM band and play the spiritual radio's wormhole, searching through the uh, sweeps for vocal anomalies, that being strange voices and sounds. That's Temporality Shadow on the Okanuts Network. The Okanuts Network, audiobooks, poetry, talk, paranormal investigations, a creative baptism for every day. Check us out on Spreaker.com and Amazon Kindle for the books. Yeah, very good. At this time, things are looking up for the Joseph Ivaldi brand. We have a book on the Kindle coming out. It's called The Book Seasons, The Journey Through the Year's Cycle. We have an audio book coming out, which hopefully around November, late November, December, is called A Soul Warrior's Journey. That's my novel. We also have other programming on... Joseph Vivaldi Network, which is looking up. We have shows such as Yesterday's News with Joe Baxter and Kurt. We have Tornwolf and Bearheart. We have this show. We also have Ricky and Wolfman's show. And also, we have Spiritus Holographic. Very good shows on the network, and we have much more to come. And we just want to thank you listeners for tuning in. And with that note, we take it off oh, oh. Well, thanks for listening, folks. It's been a great episode. Go in harmony. This is Inter Inter Dream Reality Dream Interpretation Dream Analysis and the Dream State. This is Journal to the dreamscapes. I'm your host, Joseph Baldi, and this is Twilight Cricket here. Have a good night.